Control accounts are also called total accounts. This is because they are made up of the totals of various appropriate books of prime entry in order to check the arithmetical accuracy of ledgers in a company that has many ledgers. A control account for a sales ledger is often known as a sales ledger control account or a total trade receivables account. A control account for a purchases ledger is often known as a purchases ledger control account or a total trade payables account. These accounts are normally maintained in the general ledger. The uses and limitations of control accounts. Let us look at the users first. Control accounts have the following uses. First, they enable totals for trade payables and trade receivables to be quickly extracted for the trial balance and financial statements. Second, they are kept in the general ledger separate from the ledgers themselves. Hence, there is a segregation of duties, thereby reducing the risk of errors and or fraud. Third, they improve the reliability of the ledgers by identifying errors when ledger totals do not agree with control account totals. Fourth, the control account may help to identify problems in a particular ledger if a trial balance does not balance. Let us now look at the limitations. Control accounts have the following limitations. A. A control account may itself contain errors. B. Control accounts cannot guarantee the accuracy of individual ledger accounts. For example, if compensating errors have been made in individual ledger accounts. Sources of data for control accounts. Pause the video to study the information given carefully. Note 1. The data for control accounts is always sourced from books of prime entry. 2. A trial balance acts as a check on the arithmetical accuracy of all ledgers, whereas a control account acts as a check on the arithmetical accuracy of just one ledger. The reasons for two opening or closing balances in control accounts. This happens when, for instance, payment is made in full before goods are returned. The business may have paid its suppliers in full and then decided to return goods. In such a case, this will be represented by a debit balance in the purchaser's ledger control account as the business is now a debtor of the suppliers. On the other hand, if a customer has paid in full before returning goods to the business, this will be represented by a credit balance in the sales ledger control account as the customer is now a creditor of the business. Other reasons are a credit has been given but not used. A contra has been put through but it has been ignored. Payments have been made in advance. Discounts are given but not used. There is a deposit made on goods. And finally, an overpayment of an invoice. Given below is a handy table to help with opening and closing balances in a control account. Let us look at it closely. Opening balances that are made on the first day of the accounting period or a balance brought down. If it is a credit balance, it will be entered on the credit side of the control account. If it is a debit balance, it will be entered on the debit side of the control account. Closing balances, which are made on the last day of an accounting period or a balance carried down. A credit balance, 
will be entered on the debit side of the control account and a debit balance will be entered on the credit side of the control account. This is an excerpt taken from my book, Revising AS Accounting, a Study Guide. You are to prepare a sales ledger control account from the information given for the month of June. Pause the video to study the information given carefully. Solution. Let us look at the debit side of the sales ledger control account. On the 1st of June, the balances brought down are $3,500. Closing balances on the 30th of June are sales $30,000, dishonored check represented by bank $500, balance carried down $50. Let us now move on to the credit side. Return inwards, $1,000. Cash and bank, $20,000. This is the representing the cash and checks received from customers. Discounts allowed, $500. Set off, $200. Set off are amounts of inter-indebtedness between two firms that are both suppliers and customers for each other. Set-offs are entered on the credit side of a sales ledger control account, as in this present account, and on the debit side of a purchaser's ledger control account. Irrecoverable debts, $50. On balancing the account, we get a balance carry down of $12,300 representing the business's closing debtors. Note the two closing balances. The balance carried down on the debit side is a credit balance representing the creditors of the business for any of the reasons outlined in the previous slide. This excerpt is taken from my book, Revising AS Accounting, a Study Guide. You are to prepare a purchaser's ledger control account from the information given for the month of July. Pause the video to study the information given. You will notice that there are two opening balances and two closing balances. Solution, Purchases Ledger Control Account. Let's look at the debit side of the account first. There was an opening debit balance of $500. Return outwards during the month was $500. Checks paid to suppliers, $15,000. Discounts received, $300. Let us now move to the credit side of the purchaser's ledger control account. At the beginning or start of the month, there was an opening balance of $5,500. Purchases made during the month as per the purchaser's journal was $25,000. Interest charged by suppliers, $50. And there is a debit balance of $5,000 at the end of the month. On balancing this account, we now come up with the credit balance of $19,250. Note, as a rule, Whatever decreases creditors will appear on the debit side of a purchaser's ledger control account, and whatever decreases debtors will appear on the credit side of a sales ledger control account, as seen in the last slide. This is what I always tell my students. Reconciling the balances on a control account 
with the balances in the ledgers. When the balance on a control account and the total of the balances in the ledger it controls differ, the cause or causes must be found and the necessary corrections made. This is known as reconciling the control accounts. Always remember that control accounts source their data from books of prime entry. Let us look at the following instances. When an item is incorrectly posted from a book of prime entry to a personal account in the sales or purchases ledger. A reconciliation, as mentioned above, should be made as the balances of the control account and the totals of the balances in the ledger it controls will differ. The control account will reveal the error. Second, when a page of a book of prime entry has been wrongly totaled. The control account will be incorrect, but the ledger it controls will be correct. The control account will therefore reveal the error as there will be a difference in the two balances. Third, when a transaction is entered incorrectly in a book of prime entry. The error in this case is repeated in the control account as well as in the personal account in the corresponding ledger. Hence, the control account will not reveal this error as there will be no difference in the balances of the control account and the ledger. Fourth, when a transaction is omitted from a book of prime entry. As the transaction is omitted, it will also be omitted from the personal account in the appropriate ledger and from the control account. Therefore, the control account will not reveal the error as the balances in the control account and the ledger will be equal. This is an example adapted from a past paper. Delft started trading on the 1st of July 2016. For the year ended 30th June 2017, he provided the following information relating to his sales and purchases. Pause the video to study the information given and the additional information given. As there were errors made, Delft will have to draw up an amended sales ledger control account. Solution. The opening balance was a debit balance of $21,555. This is entered on the debit side of the amended sales ledger control account. Error 1. The sales journal total for June 2017 was understated by $1,470. Therefore, the amended sales ledger control account will have to be debited with this amount to increase sales. Error 2. A customer's invoice for $2,910 was entered in the sales journal as 2,190. As per working one, this is a difference of $720 less. Therefore, the amended sales ledger control account will be debited with $720 to reflect this difference. Error 3. Discounts allowed in June 2017 amounted to $435 which was debited to the sales ledger control account. Discounts allowed should be credited as they decrease debtors. Hence, as per working two, we will double the amount, once to cancel the wrong debit, and secondly, to make the right credit entry, giving us $870. Therefore, 
the amended sales ledger control account will be credited $870. Error four, a sales invoice for 1,520 dated 30th June 2017 was omitted from the sales journal. As per the invoice, this sale was made during the financial year and therefore the amended sales ledger control account will have to be debited to record the sale $1,520. We will now balance the amended sales ledger control account to give us a new balance of $24,395. This example has been adapted from a past paper. MENA uses the double entry system of bookkeeping. At the end of January, the total of the balances in the sales ledger was 34,524. However, the balance on the sales ledger control account was $33,205. On investigation, she found a number of errors. We are to prepare a reconciliation between the sales ledger control account and the sales ledger balances at 31st January. Let us therefore reconcile the sales ledger control account balance of 33,205 to that of the sales ledger balance of 34,524. Error 1. The sales journal had been undercast by $1,649. Undercast means that this is a totaling error, which in turn means that the entries in the sales journal have been correctly posted to the sales ledger. So the sales ledger does not have to be corrected. The sales ledger control account will have to be corrected, however, as the wrong total, which was $1,649 less than it should be, has been posted to it. Hence, we will add $1,649 to the opening balance to correct the error. Error 2. A check received had been correctly entered in the cash book as $650, but was entered in the sales ledger as $560, a difference of $90 as per working one. As the cash book is a book of prime entry and the check was correctly entered in the cash book, the sales ledger control account is not affected by this error. However, we will have to deduct $90 from the opening balance of the sales ledger to correct this error. Error 3. An irrecoverable debt of $420 had been written off in the sales ledger but not entered in the control account. As the irrecoverable debt was correctly entered in the sales ledger, no correction is required in it. However, we will have to deduct $420 from the opening balance of the sales ledger control account as an irrecoverable debt decreases the amount owed by debtors. Error 4. A credit note issued for $160 had been completely omitted from the books of account. A credit note is issued when a customer returns goods. As the return was omitted, $160 will be deducted from both the sales ledger control account as well as the sales ledger, as a return decreases the amount owed by debtors. We will now see that the corrected balance in the sales ledger control account is $34,274 and that of the sales ledger is also $34,274. We have successfully reconciled the two balances. 
More information about AS Accounting, a study guide. This book is available at most book outlets worldwide, including Book Depository and Amazon. They are available in hard copy as well as in ebook format. The content of this book matches the latest CRE AS syllabus and is pitched at a level that is extremely workable. The book is written by a qualified and experienced teacher and fills the need for a guide that is solely meant for the CIE AS accounting course. Some salient features of the book are, it unpacks the CIE AS accounting syllabus, IAS terminology has been used, students love the unique question and answer presentation of theory, there are numerous tips for success, and exhaustive exercises for practice. Here are other titles available. AS Accounting Workbook, a write-in workbook that will help you prepare for your examinations and revising A-level accounting. Please contact me at junebaptister at hotmail.com for more information and for answers.